32 days to go. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate life for me. Hey, what's up guys? So, I officially have 32 days until I leave for Disney World. And I think I'm going to go down there a day early. I haven't been down to Disney World in a while, and I want to get the experience to play in the parks a day early before I actually check in. And I know that seems kind of stupid because, you know, I'm getting like a free pass for the parks and everything, but, you know, it's just the simple fact of being able to enjoy the parks and not have to worry about work um, for the first time. And yeah, it's only a day, I know I can't do very much, but I plan on heading to all the parks and doing the most exciting rides and the most exciting things before I check in the next day. Anyway, I've gotten a few more questions, uh, and most of them seem to be focused around one topic, and that is, am I allowed to have overnight guests at my apartment if they live in the same complex? I would personally ask when you get there, when you check in ask if you're allowed to have overnight guests if they live in the same complex. And, you know, I assume it's okay, but I'm going to be safe and just say no for the moment until I myself get a chance to ask because I don't want to risk being terminated from the program. And also, if you happen to have any of your roommates that are violating that rule or violating any other rules. So say you live in a wellness apartment and one of your roommates has alcohol, I would have a talk with them and make sure that they get that alcohol out. Or I would see if you can put in a request to move to a different um, apartment because if you're in a wellness apartment or even if you're not in a non-wellness apartment, if there's any of those rules that you violate, you can be terminated, uh, and very quickly. They are very strict on rules, and the rules are not to make you afraid. The rules are there in place to keep you safe. But I would say in the Vistaway apartments, the Vistaway apartments are really the party apartments. They're the ones that are the most wild, the most rowdy, they have the most parties at night going on which is why I'm going to be staying at either Chatham Square or Patterson Courts because they're more kind of mellow. I mean, yeah, I still like to have fun, but it's not like the high school and early college year fun that I used to have where it's like drinking every single day. Oh, and by the way, I've never been drunk in my life and uh, no one is ever going to get me drunk. So, and uh, the reason for that is I just personally don't feel the need to get drunk. Anyway, that's not what this vlog is about. Um, so, uh, with all that said, to summarize your question, I just would be safe and ask your recruiter when you get when you check in if uh, any guests are allowed. So there's the answer to that. Another question that I got, and the question was presented as. I'm a college student and I'm going to be at the Disney College program and I have outstanding school loans. Will I need to pay those back when I'm down there? Well, there, there's many answers to that. Um, first, I would check to see if you can take any classes or any college credit through your school in order for you to maintain half-time or full-time status in order to maintain a deferment on your school loan. I don't know. It, it really depends on what school loan company you're going through, whether it be IDAP or Ed Financial or, you know, who knows. But I would check with your school to first see if you can get college credit and college classes that can maintain you as a full-time or half-time student at your college so you don't have to pay those loans back. Or if you're deciding to not take college credit or you can't through your school, then I would call your student loan company and ask if there's anything that they can do to provide you with a deferment so you don't have to pay back your school loans and uh, have that deducted from your paycheck as well. Because really, in all honesty, after everything is deducted, and I'm sure most of you have bills that you have to pay aside from housing, you're not going to be making very much. You're going to be left with a 
little bit of money at the end of each week for groceries and general living and maybe a few times eating out, maybe a little bit of entertainment. That's why they provide you free access to the parks and discounted merchandise. I mean, like my, my uh, student loan company, Ed Financial, was able to provide me with information on how I can maintain my deferment so I don't have to pay back my school loan because I'm not taking credit down there. I'm not taking any courses down there or through my college or anything. So really, it's up to your school and it's up to your student loan company to give you that information. I'm going to go over a few of the rules that apply to cast members compared to both on and off the clock. First of all, cast members on the clock. You must always wear your name tag. You must always wear all parts of your uh, assigned costume and you must return your costume at the end of the rental agreement period. You must most likely need to purchase your own shoes that will match the costume. You must be within the Disney look at all times. Men, that means shaving every day, every single day. You can't have any stubble or five o'clock shadow or anything. You need to maintain that Disney look and log on to www.wdwcollegeprogram.com in order to find out what that Disney look is. And read it twice over. You know, make sure that you are within those guidelines and especially when you check in. But as far as being on the clock, uh, you must not eat while you're on the clock or off the clock if you're still in costume and on stage. Anytime you're on stage, you must always be within the guidelines of the company and your role. Wearing your costume, wearing your name tag. Um, when you're backstage, whether you're on or off the clock, actually you shouldn't be backstage if you're on the clock, but when you're off the clock, you can wear your uh, cast member identification, your photo identification in like a lanyard or something like that, but not while you're on stage. It cannot be seen. As far as cast members off the clock who are not in costume, they're just enjoying the parks. First of all, if you plan on playing hooky from work, and I don't recommend it, don't plan on going to the parks. <laughs> because you, your, your uh, pass that allows you to get into the parks uh, can track you. It has all your information on it. And if you go to the parks on the same day that you play hooky from work, you will be caught and you will be terminated on the spot. That's all I'm going to say about that. I think that's a pretty general and easy rule to follow. So don't do it. The same thing applies for when you're off the clock. I mean, you don't really have to be within the Disney look, but try to maintain it so you don't have to do all the extra work of getting yourself into the Disney look the next time you work. So just try to maintain it. So, I mean, there's a lot of strict rules that we all have to follow, but, you know, they're very simple to follow. If you can't follow them, then you will be terminated. And that's, it's, it's just that simple. So just follow all the rules. Make sure you understand all the rules before you go down there, and I'm sure you'll be fine. More questions coming up on the next vlog, and I will see you guys later. Yo, oh, yo, oh, a pirate life for me. We pillage, we plunder, we rifle and loot. Bring up me, hearty, yo, ho. We kidnap and ravage and don't give a hoot. Bring up me, hearty, yo, ho. Yo, ho, yo.